Rangers really have had a season to forget. They got knocked out of the Champions League in embarrassing fashion, not registering a single point in the group stage. And on top of that, their biggest rival Celtic are miles clear of them in the Scottish Premiership. But today that changes as I have become Rangers' new manager and by the end of this video they won't only be the best team in Scotland, but the best team in the world. And this is the Rangers team that I've loaded into. Now let's be honest, aside from Celtic, this is probably the best team in Scotland. But this formation really doesn't suit the players. You've got a winger as a striker, a winger as a Cam, a cam as a centre midfielder, it's all over the place. And on top of that, we have a 40-year-old goalkeeper who in less than two seasons is definitely going to be retiring, so that's an issue we've got to sort out almost straight away. Another thing we need to think about is Malik Tillman, who's currently on loan to us from Bayern Munich, and we could certainly secure him on a permanent deal if we wanted to. And overall, in season one, we've got a pretty good budget, 22 million to spend on this entire squad. But the first thing we're doing is changing the formation, because this one just doesn't suit the players at all. And after properly looking at the squad, I think the 4-3-3 attacking variation is honestly the best formation to suit the players in this team. And just like that, no players out of position and the team actually looks way better for it as well. But the question is, aside from a new goalkeeper, where do we spend the money on this team? I think we leave the front three alone, we leave the midfield alone for now. We just focus on this defensive lineup and build from back to front. Now the goalkeeper I'm looking at will solve our goalkeeping issues for a long time. Etienne Green, he's 22 years old, already better than any keeper we've got. He's the perfect Fit. And for just five and a half million, we really can't complain. And to improve our defensive lineup, I think Joe Worrell from Nottingham Forest would fit the bill down to a T. And once again, we got a really good deal. Nottingham Forest let him go for just 3.8 million. And after those transfers, we do still have 10 million left, but I'm gonna save that till January. Which means that this is the team heading into season one. Now, obviously, Rangers squad is one of the best in Scotland, meaning one thing: we have to make sure that we win everything. That means the Scottish Premier League, the Scottish Cup, and we've got to try and do a little bit better than they did in real life in the Champions League. And obviously we are in Group 8 alongside Ajax, Liverpool and Napoli, or as I like to call it, the Group of Death. And obviously we'll want to top the group and get to the round of 16 with flying colours, but we're nowhere near there yet. So my goal for this group stage is to do better than they did in real life, which let's be honest shouldn't be too difficult. Well, we've arrived in January and we are already storming the Scottish Premier League, man. We're five points clear of second place Celtic. If we're already doing this, could you imagine what we'll be doing in four or five seasons? time. Well, the good news is we did far better than Rangers did in real life, but the bad news, we still finished rock bottom and we crashed out of the Champions League. And funnily enough, our top goal scorer isn't even on our starting 11. 26 games, 23 goals, 5 assists. That's absolutely insane stats. We also have 16 million left to spend in this transfer window. Now, until I saw Lawrence's stats, I was going to bring in a new right winger, but there's absolutely no point in doing that now. But if I won't bring in a new winger, I'll bring in a new centre midfielder in place of Kamara. And the player I'm going for for that midfielder role is German Suat Sudor from Hertha Berlin. He's 25 years old and his stats are really goddamn good. I think he'd tear it up in Scotland. And we were just about able to afford him as he cost us 13.7 million. And that is definitely our transfer window done. The team looks so much stronger now with Sudor in the squad as well. But now that we're out of the Champions League, we've only got the Premiership and the Scottish Cup to focus on and hopefully by the end of this season, we'll have won them both. So at the end of the season, we actually managed to top the first stage of the Scottish Premier League and we actually left Celtic for dead. We were eight points clear of them. And in the second stage, it was no different. We topped the group with absolutely flying colours. And we also won the Scottish Cup by beating Kilmarnock 3-2 in the final. It's crazy to think we've dominated that much with the team looking like this. Imagine what we can do in three seasons. Well, it looks like Lawrence is a breakout star. 47 games, 30 goals, nine assists. Not bad in your first season. But season one was to gauge where we were at. We know that we can dominate the Scottish Premier League and the Scottish Cup, but we're nowhere near in the Champions League. And that's what we need to focus on in the next couple of seasons. But before we go any further, we're aiming for 20,000 subscribers before the end of next month, so if you are enjoying this video, leave it a big old thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this. Now, as we enter season two, it's obvious that when you look at the squad, the two weakest parts of the team are actually our centre-back partnership. If we sort that out, I think this season we'll do a little bit better in the Champions League. And honestly, with 44 million, we shouldn't have too much of an issue sorting that out. Now, the first centre-back I'm looking at has really impressed me this season, Marcos Sinet. He's 26 years old, 78 rated, and I think he's way too good for Bournemouth. We have officially just committed daylight robbery as he only cost us 13 million. Well, this net centre-back hasn't really had a good time in the Premier League so far, but I think under my management, he'll be just fine. The Belgian centre-back, Woot Fayez, I don't know if I've got that name right, but he's 79 overall, and I think he'd be amazing for us. But unlike Bournemouth, Leicester weren't going to let him go that easily, but we agreed a fee of 22 and a half million. And that's our transfer window officially over in the team. Team 
is really shaping up quite nicely. It won't take us long before this team becomes a genuine threat in the Champions League. I tell you what, we ain't having it easy in the Champions League. We're in Group E with Manchester City, Leverkusen and Panathinaikos. Honestly, I can see us finishing rock bottom once again, but I suppose we're going to have to see what happens. Well, boys, after 21 games in the Scottish Premiership, it isn't looking good. We are third in the league and we are literally 13 points below first place Celtic. There's no way we're catching that. But trust me when I say you ain't going to believe what I'm about to show you. We've topped Group E. Manchester City finished second, Panathinaikos finished third, and Bayer Leverkusen crash out. How are we doing so well in the Champions League, but not in the Scottish Premier League? Stats-wise, we're doing absolutely dreadful as well. Our top goal scorer Lawrence, 10 goals in 27 games. That's abysmal when you think about it. So with only £4 million left in the transfer budget, I don't think we're doing anything this time. But this team has made it into the knockout stages of the Champions League. I mean, we're definitely not going to win it yet, but it's going to be very interesting to see how far we actually get. And honestly, I don't think we're going to get very far. We're against United in the round of 16, man. How unlucky can you get? I'd like to think we can pull a result off against United, but it really is a hard <laughs> Oh, <laughs> do you see what I mean? 4-1. We're basically out. Well, it was 4 mile it lasted, but we're 4-1 down. There is no way in hell we're coming back from that. <laughs> we lose 4-1 again. Oh, my God. There's levels to this game, and we're nowhere near it yet. I'm in a little bit of shock. 8-2 on aggregate we lost, man. That is embarrassing. I suppose the only thing left to do now is go to the end of this season and try to forget about what's just happened. It's certainly been a campaign to forget. We finished third at the end of the first stage of the Scottish Premiership. We did slightly recover covering the second stage by finishing second but Celtic absolutely embarrassed us this season. But we did get a small bit of revenge on Celtic by beating them to win the Scottish Cup. Stats wise though I can't complain. Colac, Lawrence, Kent, Tavernier, Hadji, they all came in clutch for us. But if nothing else we've learnt one thing this year. Rangers might be a top club in Scotland but they're nowhere near the level they need to be at in Europe yet. Now I'm starting season 3 with quite a controversial action. We are putting Tom Lawrence on the transfer list. I know he's been one of our best players but honestly we need someone better than him to compete in Europe. It was really sad to see him go, but we did get a lot of money for him, 17.4 million. Which now gives us a grand total of 57 million to spend on the team this season. Now it goes without saying we need a replacement right winger for Lawrence, but also I'm going to bring in another centre back because Senesi, whilst I had high hopes for him, he really hasn't done all that well for us. And to replace Tom Lawrence, I am bringing in winger Pedro de la Vega. He currently plays for Lanos and I think it's about time a player of his calibre got to step up to a bigger league. And due to the fact he only had 12 months left on his contract we got an absolute bargain only paying out 15 million for him and for the center back role i am bringing back someone who used to play for rangers calvin bassi who actually got a transfer to ax for around 20 million he's still on good terms with the club i believe so i thought why not and we once again got an absolute bargain we only paid out 14 million for calvin bassi and we do have 24 million left but we want to save that till january just in case anything happens in the squad and now the team looks like this going into season three now last year we got absolute humble. We got battered by Man U in the round of 16 of the Champions League. We didn't win the Scottish Premier League. Our only saving grace was us winning the Scottish Cup. This season, I'm really not too fussed about the Champions League. We need to get back on track in Scotland. And we did quite easily get through the qualifying rounds, meaning we're back in the Champions League, but Christ, we're in the group of death. Look at the group we've been put in. PSG, Rumi, Galatasaray. We're going to be lucky to get a point out of this. We've arrived in January and it's a little tighter at the top this time. We're only two points behind first place Hawks. And I don't know how we pulled it off, but we have beaten Rumi to that second place spot and we're into the round of 16. Now here's the problem, we've got 32 million to spend. And our striker Kolok is clearly doing his job up top. But alongside midfielder Raskin, he's our weakest part in the team and arguably what's holding us back in Europe. So I'm making quite a controversial decision to put him on the transfer list to get as much money as possible for a very, very good strike. And it looks like the Hammers are interested as they put a 13 million bid in for him and I honestly think that's a great deal. And there he goes our best striker for the past couple of seasons. He's gone to West Ham for 13 million, but it's the right decision. But with that money, we now have 42 million to find a brand new striker. Now, the player I'm going for isn't very well known yet, but bloody hell, he's a good striker. Jorginho Rutter, the Frenchman, is six foot tall. He is absolutely rapid, and I think he'll tear it up in Scotland and in a couple of seasons' time, Europe. And Jorginho Rutter is officially our most expensive signing yet. He cost us 36 and a half million. And that is our transfer window officially done and dusted this team is now the team that is going into the round of 16 and hopefully this team does a little bit better than last season we've got a better chance of getting through to the quarters this time we're playing against newcastle united in the round of 16 now obviously in real life these guys are killing it but honestly this is a very winnable game there's hardly any weakness in our team let's see what the boys can do we are at home in the 
first game. It's a two-all draw. That is a promising start. We have a great chance to do better than we did last season, but are we going to take it? We've got a chance to get to the quarters, and we take it! 4-3 on aggregate. We have beaten Newcastle United to enter the quarters. We have got a mammoth task ahead of us. PSG, man. If coming up against United last season wasn't bad enough, we now face off against the best team in France. We've even got Mbappe and Kane up top, man. How scum can you get? We're just going to get into this. Home in the first leg. What the frick? We beat them 3-1. What the hell? I don't know how we pulled that off, but we're now 3-1 ahead on aggregate. And if we get maybe a draw or maybe if we lose 1-0, we're into the semi-finals of this comp. Oh my, okay. Yeah, fair enough. That's more like it. They absolutely humble us in the second leg. 5-1. And they knock us out 6-4 on aggregate. But the good news is we did better than last season, which means that we have made progress. So let's go to the end of the season to see how we've done in the league. So at the end of the first stage of the season, we finished second place, two points below Hearts. We're in the second stage. We recovered and once again, we were named the best team in Scotland. And for the third time running, I believe we have gone on to win the Scottish Cup. And once again, we beat Celtic to do it. I have to say I'm impressed that it's only taken us three seasons to turn this Rangers team into a Champions League contender. And it looks like Rutter was the right man for the job as he went on to get 21 goals and three assists in 25 games. Not bad for a debut season. I'm telling you now though, it's only a matter of time before we make Rangers the best team in the world. Now we begin season four with 50 million on the dot and that's bad news for what I want to do. Because I want to bring in a new midfielder for Raskin and right back for Tavernier because he's near retirement age now. But because we only have 50 million I've got to make the choice between a right back and a centre midfielder and I've got literally no other choice to bring in a right back. And honestly I could sell all these plays but it won't make enough money for me to afford to buy two positions. So like I've said I've had to buy a brand new right back and I'm going for Jed Spence from Tottenham Hotspur. I think he's way too good for that club and he's never used. And honestly Tottenham Hotspur are mugs. He totally cost us 34 million to bring Jed Spence to Rangers. And I should probably guess that's our transfer window done and dusted. The team does look a lot better however it's now up to these boys to do better than they did last season. And thankfully, we've been put in a much easier group this time. Juve, Aston Villa, and Panathinaikos in Group H. Now, last season, we escaped the group of death, so really, this shouldn't be too difficult. We are 20 games into the season, and we are certainly displaying dominance. We have not lost a single game, and we are running away with the lead. And we have once again made it through to the round of 16, and in this group, we're quite comfortable in doing so. And honestly, with 14 million, we can't really do anything to the team. So this is the squad headed into the knockouts. Now, last season we definitely met our match and got humbled by PSG what can we do this time well boys once again we're up against the Real Madrid in the round of 16 you can't write this can you I mean it does say one thing if we beat these guys we can beat bloody anybody in this competition first leg let's see oh okay a draw that I will take I mean a draw is a massive statement in its own right but if we go on to knock these guys out now that's a different story entirely oh my god we have just knocked out Real Madrid in the round of 16. We could genuinely do it this season. Honestly, after just knocking out Real Madrid, I have got no issue with whoever we come up against. We have set an absolute statement in that. And then we go on to get a two-all draw. That's massive going into the second leg. We could get into the semi-finals for the first goddamn time in this video, man. All we need to do is beat Chelsea at home. And it's definitely possible. Oh, we've done it as well. We're into the semi-finals. With respect to Bayer Leverkusen, we've just knocked out Madrid and Chelsea. I really don't see how Bayer Leverkusen can beat it. What? 3-1? Are you taking the piss? What the hell's happened to Rangers? We had a day off or something. I can't believe this. We're actually going to get knocked out by Bayer Leverkusen after everything we've accomplished so far. We actually got knocked out. I can't believe it. We beat Madrid, Chelsea, and then lose to Bayer Leverkusen. What the hell? I am so disappointed in Rangers, man. If we haven't won the Scottish Premier League and the Scottish Cup, I am going to flip my shit. It is a damn good job we did while in the league. The first stage, we won by three points, and in the second stage, we won by eight points. And we've also won the Scottish Cup again, beating Celtic to do it. We slightly redeemed ourselves from that shit show in the Champions League. I am still disappointed in every single one of you, though. I mean, the stats are impressive. I'll give them that, but we aren't in the Champions League like final are we no two ways about it we choked in the semis and by Leverkusen saw it and took full advantage but if we get the same opportunity next season we have to take it we've just arrived in season five and I want to bring in a new center back for Fias and I'd love to bring in a new midfielder for Raskin but if our previous budgets are anything to go by I don't think we're going to be able to pull that one off I'm actually kind of surprised we've got 65 million to spend however for the quality of player I want to bring in I think we can only get away with one signing this season and it's obvious who I've got to go for Raskin's by Mal, the weakest part of the
the team and we need to improve that midfield. And after searching for what feels like an eternity, I found the midfielder I want, Connor Gallagher, who currently plays for Newcastle, so it won't be too difficult to sign him because we beat Newcastle not long ago in the round of 16. But even with all that oil money Newcastle United have in their locker, they still wouldn't let Connor Gallagher go for cheap. He cost us 57.1 million. And with the addition of Gallagher into the team, that midfield looks so much better and honestly, the team now looks ready for anything. And I don't know how to feel about the group we've been put in. Borussia Mönchengladbach, Roma and Shakhtar Donetsk. I honestly feel like any one of these teams could top this group, but honestly, as long as we get through to the round of 16, I couldn't care less. I'm at a loss for words. We are second in the league halfway through the season, 18 points behind Salty. I don't get how a team this good could do that badly. Luckily though, we topped group eight and we are into the round of 16 with flying colors. The stats aren't bad in fairness, but I'm just in disbelief how bad we're doing in the league. And with only eight million left in our budget, there's no player on this earth worth that much that's gonna add value to the team. So that means this is the team entering the knockouts. Now last season, we choked in the semis against Bayer Leverkusen. So it's gonna be quite interesting to see how a new and improved Rangers team is gonna do in the Champions League. And first up was the bottle jobs who we beat 4-2 on aggregate gain into the quarters where we finally got our revenge on Manchester United, meaning we were in the semi-finals. This time last year, we fumbled the bag massively and got knocked out by Bayer Leverkusen. This year, we can't afford to do that. Come on, boys. 2-1. That is an amazing start. We are one game away from the final. At the very least, we need a draw. That is all we need to get into the final, man. 2-1 up on aggregate. Don't fumble the bag. 2-1 once again. 4-2 on aggregate. We have finally made the Champions League final. And in the Champions League final, we face off against Manchester City. So at the end of the first stage of the season, we finished second seven points below Celtic. But in the second stage, we actually topped the group one point above Celtic. And for the first time in this video, we haven't won the Scottish Cup. We lost 2-1 to Aberdeen in the freaking semis. It's safe to say Rutter was a good investment. 52 games, 38 goals, 12 assists. That's almost a goal a game, man. You are just joking. Ryan Kent isn't even available to play, man. He's picked up a suspension, for God's sake. But honestly, I'm so happy with how this team looks, and we've kept some of the OGs as well, the likes of left-back Yilmaz, we've got Hadji in the team, we've also brought back Calvin Bassi as well. And you better believe with the team looking this good, I'm using it in the final. There's no way I'm watching this. It's going to be tough, but we've got one more game to prove we're the best team in the world, and that is against Manchester City. Horns away. That is one person on the pitch you don't want to against you and that is exactly why can't afford to let them play the game Etienne Green once again making a save oh oh okay we may have a chance here Rotter's open and we have made it 1-0 inside 20 minutes beautiful play from De La Vega finding Rotter open in the box and we are 1-0 off De La Vega versus Alfonso Davies and I feel like we're gonna get the upper hand Haji we're gonna dink this over Rotter please meet it Oh my days, Edison, man, you are cracked. Haji, can we find Rutter? Rutter is in chase, and he's beating him to it on his right. What the fuck? Joe Rutter on his left foot. Oh my, uh, that is absolutely outrageous. He's a greedy shit, and he's after his hat trick, and nothing's going to stop him. I don't think there is any. Oh, well, yeah, maybe Alfonso Davies. Yo mask, can he spot Rutter? Rutter's picked his went inside. We still got the ball though. Gonna Gallagher's gonna turn and he smashed it into the roof of the goal. We are running right against City. Pedro de la Vega is getting cut inside. Alfonso Davis is chasing him, but it's not quick enough. And he's gonna di Oh my lord! Oh, oh my god! Imagine if we'd have pulled that off, but it doesn't matter. The full-time whistle has just gone. We are officially the best team in the world. From an absolutely embarrassing group stage in the Champions League this season to becoming European champions. And if you enjoyed this video, you should click somewhere right here to watch me rebuild Italian team Venezia.